Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Van here, and this episode is time to take on Albion Online's Tier 4 Solo Dungeon. I previously made a video about the Tier 3 Solo Dungeon, so if you guys are interested in that, go check it out. I'll leave a link down at the description below. Once again, we'll be starting out at the city of Marklock. It's the city located at the west side of the Royal Continent. But if you guys are starting out somewhere else, it's pretty much the same. Just open your local map and find this bluish circle over here. That's where you'll see the portal for the Royal Expeditions. Now let's talk to the Expedition Manager and select the Tier 4 Solo Dungeon. This dungeon requires us to have at least 350 average item power. You can check that in your character status window and also to be at least an adept weaver. To achieve that status, you must gain 7,547 fame from killing creatures either in another dungeon or in the open world. Check your destiny board to see how far along you are towards it. As you can see, we are qualified. So, let's go! Once we have arrived, we will be given out our mission objectives. There is more than one tier 4 solo expedition, and I think it's given out randomly. This time, we were sent to a land where the undead are becoming more active, as if there was someone or something causing them to do so. We were sent here to find the cause and eliminate any threats that we encounter along the way, so that the colonies of Albion would prosper. I guess it makes sense because no one wants a horde of raging skeletons for neighbors, right? I will be using my tier 4 plate equipment for this one, and the battle axe plus shield combo, so that I would have multiple heal skills. These skeletons have low HP and low attack power, so individually, they're not too much of a threat. But if you pull a bunch together and fail to kill them quickly, they will cause some problems for non-defensive characters. The Cursed Archer, unlike the Deranged Poacher, does not use that skill that pushes you and slows you. Well, not in this dungeon anyway, so they are quite easy to kill. If you would notice, I tried to stack 3 of my Rending Strike status, the skill in my Q slot, before using my third skill, called Vampiric Strike, the one in my E slot, because it gives more health that way. Also, each stack of Rending Strike deals bleeding status to the enemy. It's kind of funny though, if you think about it, these skeletons don't do too much physical damage, probably because they can't put any muscle behind their strikes, but they are still affected by the bleeding status. Where all those blood are coming from, I do not know. In this build, even my dash ability gives me health. It's called Rejuvenated Sprint. It's the skill in the F slot. Right now it's not much but it's very helpful at times when you get into unexpected situations. Also I use the skill Emergency Heal from my headgear. That's the one in the D slot. It heals you and your allies within the range for quite a good amount of HP. Now in terms of physical damage from this bag of bones, the Cursed Swordsman is probably the one you should watch out for. These mean canine eye candies uses a skill that looks like a continuous sweeping slash that damages an area in a cone in front of him. You can either interrupt him to cancel the skill or move behind him so that you can get some free hits while he's madly waving his sword around. 
if you're also using an axe, it's also a good idea to start your attacks with the second skill called Deadly Chop. Because aside from it dealing heavy damage, it lowers the target's resistance, therefore making your next strikes even more effective. Let's try to practice everything I've said so far on this group of skeletons. I will let the cursed skeletons bleed out. Just like that. And free hit the swordsman as he's hitting nothing in front of him. Lower his resistance. And stack 3 rending strikes before I use my vampiric strike. Also, I'm going to be using my emergency heal to keep my HP high. See? Looks like everything went well. I sometimes run this dungeon using the Great Axe. I try to pull the skeletons together to finish them off with the Whirlwind attack. But that technique is a bit riskier because you tend to run out of energy a lot faster. Doing it this way gives you a higher chance of finishing the dungeon without dying. Therefore, you won't have to spend much of the reward silver for repairs. Another thing that you might have noticed if you've already watched the tier 3 dungeon run is that in this dungeon, there are no cross sword markings that would indicate that there are elite mobs nearby. Fortunately in this dungeon, the elite mob is placed in a dramatic position wherein all his followers are facing him. Plus, he still has that ring under him that would indicate that he's not a normal mob. Let's just finish up this guy and we're gonna start preparing for this dungeon's first elite monster or the mid boss I'd like to call them. This dungeon's mid boss is called the Cursed Sharpshooter. This guy drops a totem that fires a shot that pushes us back when we're hit and he shoots multiple arrows in a cone. He also casts a wide AoE spell that drops showers of arrows upon us. Just keep moving around while timing your shots to avoid these skills. Unfortunately, I seem to be experiencing a bit of a lag so I've been catching a lot of these attacks. But thanks to our build, we have multiple heal capabilities that will help us survive this. See, even with that bad uh, lag, I'm still just able to finish up the enemy. Let's watch these guys bleed out just for fun. Dead. 
dead. Okay, there's a death monger and a bit of lag, but we're okay. So anyway, the death monger is like an ice mage. He uses a skill like an ice bolt that slows us, and then he casts an AOE that ha deals high dam high damage. If you want to avoid that attack, you'd better be aware when he uses the slow skill so that you would move away or cancel the skill immediately after. I'm so glad I have high defense and lots of heal. So you see here, I really don't have time to regenerate. So I'll just let the skeletons die by themselves. Ouch. And kill the deathmonger. We have to be careful in this part of the dungeon because there are a lot of deathmongers. Um, swordsmen and archers that are really close to each other. We wouldn't want to pull them all at once because if you do, or if I do, it's most likely that I'd be returning to my save point or the uh, beginning of this dungeon. There's the slow. Avoided that AoE. and heal myself see with these techniques i could keep my hp above the 50 percent mark most of the time take care of this swordsman here and uh, there's another one let's regenerate our energy okay and up regenerating let's kick this bones behind see there's the archer down there sometimes if you engage the swordsman near it they're all going to run in front of you. That would be very bad news. Let's regenerate again. Here comes the other swordsman. Now while it's not that difficult to take on even at two swordsmen at the same time, it's very risky because for example another mob happens to pass by, you wouldn't have enough energy to use your skills when that happens. Take care of this other archer. And I had almost no energy left. this guy on this side he's he's waving his sword around like a madman and there it goes just like I said before it's like 
what they call in another game um, chain aggro where in when you draw aggressiveness from one mob the mob right next to him or it rushes towards you and sure enough in that situation I almost have no energy left to use as skills for this archer but the rending strike is almost uh, costless actually it's around 8 energy and I regenerate takes uh, the energy regeneration um, takes care of it so now we enter what seems to be an abandoned church I didn't know the Legion of the Dam were so damn religious. By the way, there's a version of this dungeon that is for party mode. Of course, the only difference is that the mobs are stronger and there's an additional cursed skeleton named Cursed Scorpion. He has this long range skill that pulls you towards him when you're hit. Pretty much like the Scorpion Ninja on that game Mortal Kombat if you're familiar with it. Let's kill this Deathmonger before his body comes back. I probably can't take two Deathmongers and this guy at the same time. So it's a good thing that the Deathmonger died. But having two extra skeletons is no big problem. Oh. Let's not move too close. And we'll go this way to get our chest out of the way please okay it gave 225 silver not bad although the chest on the open world gives thousands of silvers they do spawn rarely sometimes I think there's a schedule for them really waving his sword around I happen to know that there's an extra archer over here let's just kill him too so that we could get the extra silver Now to save on time, I will switch to the Great Axe for the Whirlwind attack. Cause I don't want to take on all those skeletons one by one. I mean I could but it just takes too much time. Unlike here, we just pull them all together and spin like a deranged fidget spinner and they're all down. Let's wait for the cooldown and do the same on the other side. See? Easy. But we can't do that to the boss. So let's switch back to the battle axe and shield combo. Just wait for the cooldown of the skills and let's go! 
Now this dungeon's final boss is called the uh, Cursed Death Lord. Well, he's actually just a super version of the Deathmonger. He uses the Ice Bolt skill to slow us. Then he casts that large AOE that deals a lot of damage. Only difference is this guy also summons an extra skeleton to do extra damage. But if you time your movement correctly, you'd pretty much be able to avoid his spells. There's the slow. And he didn't cast the AOE because I think he ran out of MP or energy. See? We finished him without even getting our HP below 50%. Easy, right? Now the portal guy pops out again behind us and thanks us for our effort. He then opens a portal to town. This dungeon gave us over 5k silver. I think that's excluding the daily bonus it is active. It's not bad for beginners like me who started the game with empty pockets. So guys, unfortunately that's it for this episode. If you liked or found this video useful, please don't forget to hit the like button below and subscribe to my channel so that you would get notified whenever I upload new videos. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.